Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. As a quick side note before we start all of this, I want to give a shout out, happy birthday to Skin Crawler. By the time this goes up to YouTube, it will not be there, but Skin Crawler, one of the longtime viewers in Twitch chat and subscribers. Glad that person was born. Upper right hand corner, and it should be a pretty fun match actually to cap it all off. This is BSL 18 Hasu League round of eight on Radeon this time. Upper right hand corner, we got Bug starting as the Midnight Blue Protoss. Bottom right hand corner, we got Kiko starting as the Red Terran. And Kiko, yeah, I'm going to favor him in the match overall, the series, but I think Bug showed in the previous match there are a couple things that could have shifted. Maybe a really good stasis landing, maybe dodging some EMP here and there. Kiko just showing why he's such a ferocious competitor, though. Like, the EMPs were really on spot. A lot of the troop movement was really on spot. Bug won that really big initial engagement and was in positions to win game one, but not able to cap it out. I wonder if we're going to see another 12 Nexus, being that this is a four-player map. And I wouldn't be shocked. I'm wondering if Kiko is going to potentially anticipate that. This isn't going to be cross-position 12 Nexus play. Looks like maybe not. We're going to see a gateway opener this time from Bug. But sometimes in the tournament, you'll have those those mind games where it's like you opened up 12 next. I actually would be interested to see Kiko return the favor with like a 14 command center or something like that. 12 command center or maybe even a barracks marine into command center, which is sometimes a play that is possible. Uh, Kiko actually setting up for a front door seal, potentially. You got that barracks along that corner. Or potentially, this is, sometimes they will see this when it is an earlier factory play to get the barracks in the air more rapidly to provide forward spotting. It looks like Kiko going to go for a pretty rapid scout, making the way top right first. We have a gate and a cybernetics core, no first sell it, and a quick assimilator as well. Which suggests Bug is going to go for more fast Dragoon play rather than initial zealot play wants to maybe try to contain uh, contain those vicious vultures the vultures were absolutely fantastic for kiko last match pylon behind the wall kiko discovers the location wants to hang around though and see and he's gonna attack that pylon to be annoying briefly it's always fun to get the you know we're under attack on the big bsl line i'm just noticing as well but noting that there's no zealot right there and wow there it is there's the command center so yeah, did the barracks one marine into command center play? Now let's see if it can be defended is the next thing. And it looks like it's going to be a reversal of fortune from game one. As Bug starting to scout upper left hand corner is going to end up with potentially last scout. Comparative to his opponent. So Kiko saying, you know what? You want 12 Nexus? I'm going to go barracks marine into expansion myself, which is a very, it's not quite a 12. It's not a 14 command center. But it's a semi-defensible, aggressive economic opener from Terran. And it's kind of the equivalent of 12 Nexus for Terran. For Terran. And Protoss Lament it. Looks like we are seeing a Nexus drop after Dragoon. Very brave play there from Bug. Maybe recognizing... <laughs> I'm not sure actually what the, the logic was there. But going and dropping it in front of Kiko's face... Regardless, Kiko going to end up with the early advantage. There's the bunker, the three Marines in it, and the barracks floating down to go ahead and cap that front factory on the way. Additional SCV making its way out to maybe get... And I'm wondering if this is going to plant itself towards a third, or if there's just an attempt to get in the base, recognizing there were, that was in the Nexus, to see if there's a follow-up DT or something along those lines. The SCV making its way across the Dragoon, there's a second Dragoon to engage, so this should be a dead SCV, depending on Micro from Bug. Nah, I was going to say nice blockade, but mm, okay, yeah, got him. Wasn't able, wasn't able to get underneath the misfire rate on the high ground. Range upgrading, second gateway out. Dragoon holding that forward position. We do have range on the way and an engineering bay being built just in case from Kiko as well as the machine shop. Kiko going... Second factory as well, and I'm anticipating this to go to double machine shop. Maybe get some siege tanks out, push the dragoons off the front to open up the vultures. And oh, knowing Bug though, I have a feeling this probe is out here. To, I was about to just say, knowing Bug, Bug's going to grab a third base somewhere out in the map. And I think that's what this probe is precisely out there to do. 
maybe grab it bottom left. We'll see. Maybe at the 9 o'clock location, that's where it's headed right this second. We'll keep an eye on that. The Dragoons, in the meantime, just about to have range. But the Siege Tank, well on its way. Kiko, in a pretty comfortable position, has that missile turret up just in case there were DTs to follow up. Wasn't able to get any information as far as that follow-up. Marine sneaking in, sneaking out. And a fourth Marine produced. So extra defense, a couple SCVs on the front to prevent any sort of run-by. Interestingly enough, there's the second machine shop with that second siege tank queued. No sudden gas grab as of yet from Kiko. And it looks like, yeah, at the 9 o'clock base, this is potentially going to be the third from Bug. Robotic Facility Observatory on the front. Now the Dragoon's starting to do their work against the bunker. The barracks float in a nice, well, almost a nice play. The barracks was floating over the siege tank to try to prevent target fire on the siege tanks, but unfortunately the Dragoons automatically retargeted on the attack, so I think that might have ended up working against uh, Kiko a little bit. Additional shot, gonna go ahead and back them up. It's just two Dragoons versus two siege tanks, which is a winning fight for the siege tanks. Four siege tanks now queued up, which actually gives plenty of defensive, should there, should have there have been reavers or drops, it's a lot of siege tanks to work with. It looks like we do have the robotic support bay behind us, but it is gonna be observatory observer first. So the reaver more of a defensive option in the midst of that. And now we have those vulture upgrades queued. So the siege tank able to pull those dragoons back a little bit. Still, so the probe has been out here a while, but no nexus as of yet. I'm still waiting for that. And we have another probe making its way out to, so maybe this is just an option probe to grab a quick fourth. Bug wanting to play the mind games and the Marines are actually out of the bunker. Is this gonna turn into a push? I was expecting these siege tanks just here to clear the Dragoons off the front, not to see kind of an off timing. So this is like a seven minute now attack on the front. The Observer is going to be able to make its way up. A single Vulture, so the Vulture is gonna have mines alongside, but the Observer is gonna be able to confirm whether this turns around or not. And I think this is Kiko just wanting to test Bug Bug did just grab that 12 o'clock, and this is kind of an interesting timing. So finding the timing when that Nexus was dropped. So there's a kind of a patch right here. Reaver moving its way out. I'm not sure about this timing from Kiko. I haven't seen it a lot. One siege tank down. Marine's dead. And it looks like a second siege tank going to get wiped out. That siege tank did die to focus fire from the siege tanks along that corner. Bug where I thought he might actually have a really solid initial defense now falling apart a little bit. There is a mine separating reinforcements as well. A few mines and the three Dragoons getting wiped out on the front, which is actually significant. But with the two siege tanks and the damage done, it looks like Kiko going to back up a little bit. Still waiting on siege check and is now moving to the 12 o'clock actually. So feels, you know what? I got some mines in the way. Let's go ahead and create some havoc and force an engagement. The mines getting cleared between point A and point B. We still have that shuttle, keep in mind. In between, now there's Siege Check and Bug at even supply, losing those three Dragoons on the front to that mine was pretty significant. So now might end up losing some pylons, might even end up losing this 12 o'clock Nexus. Second wave, so four gateways up, second wave of Dragoons out, and Kiko with a nice little off-timing attack. Looks like he might, well, he's certainly delaying mining here at the 12 o'clock. Has a supply lead, kind of check the base and see what's going. Also dropping two additional factories, which is really going to be able to keep that pressure up, should he desire to do so. Vulture checking top left, just making sure there's nothing else up there. The Reaver trying to move in position, might get a full-on drop and shot before the siege tanks are able to get something accomplished. There's some mines in the way, they're going to get cleared up. And that Reaver, that was not the best siege location. Maybe he thought that was an interesting mind game. Maybe he thought, okay, there's nothing in there. Otherwise, he would have dropped on me. So Kiko ends up losing the siege tanks. And that's going to lead to a fourth base grab bottom right in response from Bug. Going to redrop that pylon. So the 12 o'clock base stands. Probes are transferring that direction. The vulture that was maybe trying to sneak back and make that happen, going to get cleared out as well. And so Kiko ends up losing a lot of troops, but he wants to, this is what I talk about Kiko pressure here. He's not missing a beat. He's going to go up to six factories here in response. So six factories, double machine shop, plus one weapon. So he might wait for that plus one weapons to kick in, but he's going to have a surge of troops. Two Reavers making their way out on the front. 
maybe to provide some harassment across these locations. An observer also making its way forward is going to be able to get in the main and certainly going to be able to see at least the edge of these two factory lines. This is actually very important for Bug to spot so that he can get sufficient gateways, etc. down. But in the meantime, Shuttle, without speed, landing at the natural expansion. Big SCV hit right there. Is he going to get the follow-up hit? Emptying the natural expansion. Siege Tank now staging up. And that is actually really going to put a stymie. That's really going to make it where there's water in the cereal rather than milk for this sort of attack. Because he wanted to keep those... These, uh... SCV lines healthy where he didn't have to worry about SCV production to support the six factories and instead is going to end up dropping looks like a single reaver gets out but oh man dropping out right on top of the SCV line gets wiped out right there but now Kiko in dire straits and not the band because is going to have to rebuild that SCV count. He's got the six factories that are, he's already invested in behind this. We got four Nexus in the space behind this. And Bug, ooh, well, Bug donating some units. Okay, now, now getting a little bit. And he's going to actually charge forward. Bug may be getting a little bit over aggressive here. He does have a supply lead. But he could very quickly lose that supply lead by engaging in an unfavorable attack. If he does fan out the Dragoons here along these corners, he could definitely box out the Vultures, because the one thing off the six factories that could be a follow-up harassment option for Kiko is, is get those Vultures out in the field and try to find some space. He's not going to find it at the 12 o'clock, but he might be able to find it. Never mind. That's pretty well boxed in as well. It would be trying to get the Vulture Flood out there and get some value. I don't think that's going to happen at this stage, though. I'm going to maybe try to regardless. So yes, fanning the vultures out, there's Pug actually at 131 of 172 supply as far as the defense here. Yeah, the vulture is finding nothing there, but still going to try to hug that wall to see if I can get down another wave of dragoons. Going to go ahead and move up and clear everything. Vulture is going to go ahead and pull their way back. We got, what, five siege tanks just defending the front, so... In a pocket that would not be the best to attack into, but Bug doing what he needs to do here and just sitting back and working that macro advantage. Now he can go Gateway Man easily and pull out a victory. He could switch to Carriers if he wants, and that would be easy. It looks like he's anticipating drops, potentially, so he's got Photon Cannons being built there at the 12 o'clock location. And it looks like maybe he's just going to go for Gateway Man. He's got the, the stage to go ahead and get the Stargate and go for Arbiter Tech. I don't think he needs it, though does need to surge the gateway count. And now that probe that was in the bottom left a long time ago going to drop an additional nexus. This feels a little bit like overkill. You're already at double the the, the base count. The only way your opponent's going to be able to get back into this, and it looks like there was a drop incoming, the only way your opponent's going to get back into this is by finding exposed bases and killing off workers. Looks like two cannons. The observer going to see it, so the dragoon's going to flood forward. They're going to have to kill their own pylon, potentially. Well. So, th two vultures make it. It looks like they're cleaned up by the cannon. One makes it into the main. That's going to get cleaned up as well. But Kiko, now going to start making his way out towards the front, has skipped plus one armor, and has instead gone for plus two. So that will upgrade as he's making his way out. He still has a good amount of siege tanks. This is exactly what he needs to do. Is get... Find these stranded attack troopings. Before they're grouped up and, and can make a nice... Yeah, get some territory. Oh, pull back. Pull back, Goliath. Find a nice en engagement point. Stage a little bit forward. Kill a... You know, peel off a few troops. Go a little bit forward. Peel off a few troops. Bug with an enormous supply lead. He doesn't have an upgraded... Well, he's actually got plus one weapons, which isn't bad. The gateway count a little bit higher, but honestly, could be even higher than this. And Bug moving up to go ahead and engage this army mid-map. This is, again, where I kind of don't like... Oh, and some Dragoons filtering in. Oh! Oh, no! Dragoons dying all over the place there to the north. But this still might be too much. The Zealots mostly getting cleared out. There's a few left engaging from the rear. The siege tanks are the way back, and it looks like this is sufficient for Bug 
to go ahead and get this around. The SCV is trying to defend themselves. I wonder if this is going to be GG from Kiko right here. As what's left of the siege tank count getting cleared up. So he's down. His main base is going to mine out in two minutes. And he really does not have a prospect on a third. So that's a reset. We have some additional gateways being built. Okay, that was what I was a little bit concerned with for Bug, is having sufficient gateways to do the resupply. And never mind Kiko going to turn this into, he's like, you know what, I don't have a lot of siege tanks, but I bet Bug doesn't have an army now. So off that army reset, going to grab his own command center. What I'm not sure if he realizes is that there's still an additional base here. So even if he gets this base, it's interesting, he's actually got more minerals at his main than he usually would because of the, the Reaver harass. So it's still be, I guess, on three bases for a little while, but this is going to be five bases behind it, and Bug going to donate two probes, but with a little bit of follow-up support, might be able to sneak back into this. Kiko, though, doing a pretty good job, and oof, yeah, going to be able to get that here. So Kiko actually doing a pretty good job getting those vultures out on the map, and might be able to create enough havoc to find his way back in. One thing that Terran is pretty good at is shelling in and just working on those upgrades. Bug marching the zealots wholesale into the three o'clock able to get a siege tank for his effort this is piecemeal attack unfortunately i think if it was grouped up together it would have been an easy kill but still a 50 supply lead for bugs so he's got units to throw away this might force a cancellation or a lift off if this command center finishes because the zealots just sitting there on the ground and they are overwhelming in numbers got those siege tanks pinned into the wall and let's see if with the additional dragoons making the way in if they can actually concentrate a fire on that command center, they might be able to just, yeah, back out, wipe that command center out, which again puts Kiko in a dire situation. So yeah, command center lifting off. It's going to try to get out of dodge. Some siege tanks trying to buy time, but these are siege tanks that Kiko really can't donate right this second. Although it is siege tanks versus dragoons, there's still some zealots in between here. It's kind of the standoff. I said dodge earlier, so now it's the standoff of the OK Corral. We got, what, five siege tanks versus a group of dragoons? Looks like the Dragoons are going to go ahead. Are they going to back down? Nope, they're going to go for it. Turning around. Going to go ahead and clear out. Get some additional siege tank bonus. Clear some mines out. So Kiko loses a lot, but might be able to turn right back around and walk right back out. But Bug is just... Well, I would I want him to group up his troops and go for this again. He's still moving the troops down there. Feeling like he can just go for a constant rally. And make this happen. The trick of this is he's also buying himself some time. And while he's buying himself some time behind this, he's transitioned to Fleet Beacon and four carriers in the top right, recognizing he's got a great economic position. And this time, too much. That command center is now burning in the sky. And it looks like it is going to get wiped out. Devastating for Hiko. Half the worker count right this second. The Dragoons get wiped out. But they're heroes. Everybody gives them the whatever the Protoss equivalent of a salute is. Maybe it's that's just their Antaru Adun thing. Do they ever make like a hand motion with it? Main has some a little bit of resources. Natural expansion's just about mined out. And Bug not missing a beat, continuing to forward the attack troops. The bottom right, some distance mining happening now for Hiko to try to stay alive in this. But uh, he's on another timer as well. Looks like additional Stargate's getting dropped. Bug going snow maneuver now. Saying like, you know what's better than one carrier? 12 carriers all at once. And he might be able to afford exactly that. Looks like the... We got a Dark Templar top left. Comsat is going to be able to clear them up. However. So how many siege tanks we got down here on defense? Not enough, I don't think. Bug... Going in once again, the Zealot's going to be able to clear the mines this time. Maybe, it looks like the Vulture is able to clear that out. Plus three weapons for Kiko in the space of this, and I missed that actually. So the ground trooping without the spell support is still going to get wiped out. Kiko at half the supply, but keep in mind a lot of that supply is in the sky, which rhymes. Makes me feel like I'm in Reading Rainbow all of a sudden. Command center being rebuilt. It is just one base here for Kiko. One base versus at least three, or I would say four. Because that base healthy, 12 o'clock base is healthy. Natural expansion is a little bit, so I guess it's three base versus one. But that's still a massive economic output advantage for Bug. And he's starting to take flight. What's the, in what's the inversion of take flight? Take flight makes it sound like run away. 
what's like the air equivalent of, I guess so many things like flee via the air, like ducks take flight and they escape hunters or predators, right? What's the opposite of that? Where like a hawk dives on its prey. Like there's diving, but that's like physically what it's doing here. Dark Templar cleaning up some troops here bottom left to maybe get in a, yet another nexus. I should make an acronym out of that. Yet another neck, uh, yet another nexus. And I believe that I can't say it all of a sudden. Yet another nexus. Yan. We got Yan out here. The way Bug is playing. But now, what? Two Goliaths, three Goliaths, four Goliaths to defend this. And they're easily going to get picked off. Five more queued up. And SCV is going to get picked off for days, potentially. And do we already have... Let's try to grab an interceptor. We already do have plus one weapons right there. But with the plus three weapons, at least the Goliaths in sufficient numbers might be able to kill a few interceptors. Part of the problem with that is... Looks like the Vultures are going to be able to swarm that Nexus bottom left, by the way. But part of the issue with that is, is like even if you're able to swarm it a bit, it uh, you still need... You still need... Uh, to be assaulting Protoss's ground army where they're being taxed on the mineral front. That is not happening right this second. Another Dark Templar making his way in. This one probably going to eat a lot of mines before he's able to make anything happen. Carrier fleet reassembled, which makes it sound like an Avenger movie now. The Vulture's moving out again with that plus three weapons. That's still pretty risky as far as, uh, I, I, as in they pose a risk, I should say. But now... More carriers out in the field. Going to go ahead and take out that science facility, because why not? They could focus fire that command center. Which it looks like they're going to start doing now. Group repair. I don't think the group repair is going to be sufficient with this level of damage output. We'll have to see, though. All the SCVs trying to repair it. One of the carriers actually eating full damage right there. Some Goliaths getting picked off. It looks like that command center is going to survive. And the Vulture is able to clear out a few troops in between here. Like I said, those vultures are still a little bit scary, given that they have plus three weapons upgrade. So Bug, way ahead still. Kiko refusing to give up. Calling, I think this is the tournament wear down situation. The, the Dragoons trying to clear some mines and make their way out there. Could also be that Kiko didn't realize that this base was existent bottom right. So he thought he was in a one base versus two base scenario. And so he thinks he's in a much better position than he is. But look at that bank for Bug, and he's back supply. Dragoon's starting to march out and clear everything out. I think he just wants to make sure that there wasn't like a hidden expansion somewhere out on the map. A lot of siege tanks out here. Kiko trying to put the engineering bay over the command center to make it harder to target the command center. Buy himself some time. The Dragoon's in the meantime clearing everything Top left, we got some more probes making their way that direction, I presume, to go ahead and grab that expansion. Additional problems for Kiko is, is so I think his gas is depleted both at his main and his natural expansion. Never mind, we got a little bit of gas there at his natural expansion, but he's not going to be able to cap that gas for quite some time, which means theoretically less tech units. More Dark Templars still making their way bottom left. Looks like they've done some pretty good work, at least clearing mines. Bad day to be a Dark Templar, I'll tell you what. The Goliath count sufficiently large where it's at least keeping the carriers back momentarily. And Bug now, yeah, going to go ahead and grab additional Nexus. He might as well just move these Dragoons, clear everything else out. He's got a little bit of a pocket of Dragoons right there. But honestly, it might as well just start building some, just move the Dragoons and attack them in, get rid of them, get some Zealots in underneath to do some disruption. Bug pecking away at what he can. And Kiko staving on. He's got like the the fingernails in the cliffside edge trying to hold on as best he can. Bug doing what he should do, which is expand absolutely everywhere else and just make sure that his opponent hasn't grabbed, hasn't magically grabbed something else. Kiko getting feisty now, moving out with his army. I'm not sure he can, so able to clear a couple Dragoons out. Not sure you can really afford to do this. It looks like the Dragoon's now going to finally make their way bottom left instead of just sending in Dark Templar to die for the cause. Somehow they missed these mines all the way across. I'm just going to clear out everything bottom left, so that is takeable territory. And Kiko has some siege tanks mid-map that might draw the carriers off. 
But this could very quickly take out some bases, so could take out top left pretty rapidly. Which would be a small win at the very least. So, while Bug distracted and engaging some troops here, Siege Tanks have managed to sneak out, and this is a long distance for the carriers to travel to deal with those Siege Tanks. Is Bug even going to notice in between everything else he's doing as well? Hmm, Kiko finding ways to, to keep his odds alive. It looks like Bug saying, okay, well, if your Siege Tanks are all up here, that means you don't have any Siege Tanks defending your last command center, so let me just move in my Dragoons and go for a counterattack. It looks like that command center has been wiped out, so yeah, no more mining for Kiko. Kiko gonna GG right there, recognizing. Yeah, it was gonna be a lost base regardless. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.